But last night we didn't actually do any coaching in a, in a group with one client. We actually had the stories from the participants and then they ended up asking questions of each other, not realizing that they were asking coaching questions. And then I was asking particular questions to draw out more information. And Paula particularly had quite a bit of a shift. We did a little bit of a, we did a breathing exercise and a visualization exercise of her and her stomach. And she was trying to locate a feeling and we wanted to know what that feeling was. And I asked her to tell me if that feeling had a color or a shape to it, what it looked like. And she said it's red because anger was the emotion that, that she didn't know, that she wasn't really identifying. And she said the shape was a fist. So we ended up actually getting that to turn yellow and then to actually open. And then eventually she said, I don't have anything there. It's fine. She said, I feel much freer. And she said, I'm actually starting to feel things in my heart space now. So that, that replay from last night will be quite interesting for those of you who want to know how to use those mind body tools as you get to modules five and six particularly, and then module six, uh, module seven neuroscience, just understanding the science behind how we can use the brain in such a way to elicit not just a relaxation response, but to use our visualization abilities to create healing in that space while we are also helping someone identify their beliefs and to reframe their story so that we can reshape their belief and the meaning around that event so it no longer has the power over them that it once did. Okay, Cheryl, do you, you want to unmute yourself? There you go. There. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. I, I don't know if it's a specific question of anybody, but I'm, I'm just kind of curious about something where I'm, I'm, I keep on getting hung up. So is it okay to ask that question? Hung up? Yeah, I, I keep on getting hung up on something. So that's, um, I wanted to ask and see if anybody else has like the same experience or right. maybe you can point, some, point things, something out. Okay, great. So not only with this particular um, course, but just as I've, I've been doing a lot of um, just, I've always kept journals of, of things, right? My whole entire life. Mm -hmm. But it's only been in the past couple of years where I've really been able to go back and really just like sift through a lot of stuff just to answer questions, like, because it just kept on coming up. So here's something that keeps on coming up and I do not understand it. And it is so frustrating to me. It's like, it's just like tonight, any time I start to focus on anything of my own, like my own, like not my kids, not somebody else, my own every single time. It's like, it gets sabotaged. I mean, I look back and I'm like, okay, what did I do wrong? What did I not set up right? What did I not prepare? I'm just constantly going back and like trying to analyze, like, did I, am I, am I being too selfish with my time? Did I bite off too much? Am I, am I taking on too much? That sort of thing. But that's a consistent pattern throughout my entire adult life. And when and I do, and I have done everything for everybody. I've been that person. And it's like over the past few years, when I hit my 50s, I was just like, so like just physically and emotionally and spiritually just spent that I had to stop doing that. You know, I had to stop. There was no other choice for me. And that's how stubborn I am, I guess, you know, not really listening to those internal you know, even though I listen to everybody else and I'm, I'm a crazy empath when it comes to picking up energies off of other people. So when it comes to myself, I mean, I was telling Nat this when we were doing our coaching session and she knows how frustrated I was because I was just like, I just fell apart. So I'm just like, I don't even know who I am. Like, you know, I don't even, I, I, I can't take, I do take care of myself. But what I'm saying is, is that I have been so distracted with everything else in my life that now I'm at a point of where I have things that I know that I want to do them. And I know that I can take all of my experiences and, and glean a lot of wisdom from that and help other people, especially in the areas that I'm very, very familiar with. Um, but yet it seems like anytime that I start to get any momentum in that and I'm feeling really good about it, then I just fall flat on my face or something else just comes up and just gets in the way of me even being able to sit down and concentrate for over like an hour without being interrupted. And I'm just wondering, it's like, 
what am I kind of putting out there, I guess, for this to always be manifesting like that in my life? I mean, and I don't know how to maybe articulate it verbally, but if anybody can kind of grasp what I'm trying to, I'm asking here, it's just like, there's just like, anytime the door opens and I step up to the door to answer the door and I just barely get it open, then it just, somebody just pulls it shut on me again or, um, or I go to answer the door and it just gets slammed in my face. That's, and, and I just don't know how to get over this hump. I don't know if it's self-sabotage. I, I don't know where it like, I don't know where the root of this is coming from. And it's just incredibly frustrating because like I have a background in psychology. I have a background in neuroscience. I have all these things, but yet I can't seem to get it together to use them or there being a crisis every time I turn around. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, so coaches, you have a client right here. Hope you're paying attention and you're listening. So what I'd like to know, um, what I'd like to know, Cheryl, I'm going to say a statement and I'd like you to just see if it resonates with you or not. I want something, but I already believe that what I want is not available to me. That might be true. You know, somewhere, I try not to think that. I'm trying to, to change that story but you know when it's dark and you're by yourself and you start to think then I really start to doubt myself like yeah. oh, you know I don't know how long that'll ever take or maybe that's just uh you know okay so something that's never going to happen so okay all right so so there seems to be a belief there that what I want is not available to me would that be accurate or not Yes, very much so. Okay. All right. So you've got a starting point, coaches. Who would like to ask the first question to just clarify feedback, paraphrase, or, or just help get a little bit more clarity for everybody as well as particularly for Cheryl so that we can help her move beyond this. Elisa, I think you put your hand up first, so go for it. You can just un unmute yourself and ask away. Do you want me to do it for okay. you? Okay. Yeah, I, I think I got it. Did I? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I would like just to, like, if you could give us one particular example to see at what level uh, uh, you, is, uh, that, that, that you might want and you might think that is not available for you, at what la level it is like if you could give us just one particular example, the, the one, the first one at the top of your head, that ha when that happened, when when you feel that that exactly that happened that you are saying. Um, well, okay, here's a really easy one. Just like tonight, I I told my kids, my boys, I'm like, I have this Zoom call I'm going to be on. This is what time it is, and they're 15 and 12. Okay, I mean, my one son is on the spectrum, but I mean, they get it. But it's like being on the phone if you're a mom. Maybe you understand this. Nobody wants you until you're on the phone. And then everybody has an emergency, right? And that's exactly what happened tonight. And one of my kids did something to the other one that was just like so mean. And it just really upset me because I'm just like, I'm trying to focus in here. But yet part of me is outside this door going, come on this is something for me and and you guys can't hang for an hour by yourselves and just entertain yourself take a shower so I mean it's it's, it's simple things like that or giant things like you know um, my husband who seems to have a crisis every single time I am not looking at him even though we're separated now you know I'm away from all that but still just somebody's something is always happening it feels like and I'm just thinking maybe it's the stuff that I'm throwing out there that's causing to come back. But I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm really trying to be extremely intentional. And again, when I coached with Nat this past week or last week, I guess it was Natalie or Natalia. And, um, you know, being intentional about what you're thinking. I've, I've really been thinking about the stories that I'm telling myself. And Vicki, I think you've done some, some videos on that too. And 
I just am like, you know, it doesn't seem like anything is moving, anything is changing. And I'm just like, I'm just walking around, just like banging my head against the wall, it seems like all the time. And, you know, I'm, I don't like looking like this, you know, I don't like being so vulnerable mm -hmm. in front of everybody, but it's so frustrating. Yeah, and we can see and hear that right now. Do you need to just take some deep breaths and just come back into your heart space right now? Um, yeah, I've got my, <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm just kind of, we're just going to be quiet now and just kind of let, you know, if anybody wants to say anything or, you know, observe anything, that's fine. I mean, I'm totally open. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not against hearing truth. That's just, I just want to find it and just, yeah. And yeah. have some ground, you know? Yeah. And, and we'll be able to help you facilitate that process but really the only person who can own your truth is you yeah now i know that you are very much into essential oils so do you have some essential oils near you that might be of emotional support oh, yeah. right now yeah i put some on so you know i'm okay so i, you know, I am doing that uh, Okay. All right. So from what Cheryl's just said, Elisa, did you have any other questions to, to continue what you asked? Mm, no, not for the moment. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Did anybody else have Jody? Um, hi, Cheryl. I feel like there's quite a bit of, uh, quite a lot of questions we could ask here. Um, but one thing that I have found interesting in the modules that I've done so far is our habit of looking for evidence to back up the story that we're telling ourselves over and over again. Um, and I'm just wondering if perhaps you're internalizing events that are happening and making them back up your story that you're self-sabotaging and every time something everything every time you do something for yourself, something comes in to, to abort it. Um, and for instance, if I said to you, if I said to you the example you said to me just then, um, and I, I'm, I feel this, I've got three kids running around outside that door, you know, but wanting to burst in here as well. And if I said to you that that they did that to me, would you would you consider that as something that I've done to sabotage this meeting, or would you say that's that's kids being kids? I'm interested to know how. If you heard someone else say the story that you've just said, how you would perceive that? Because I'm just wondering if you're kind of look at our habit of looking for evidence to back up the stories that are holding us back instead of kind of um, looking for evidence to to go to the positive to go to the positive way. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, that actually really resonates with me when you said that. I am sitting here going. Yeah, because I mean, you know, it's a, your perspective of your kids versus my kids, same deal going on. Yeah, and I think, I'm I guessing that you that, wouldn't look at that if I said it was my kids doing it, you wouldn't judge me on it and say that it's because of something I've done wrong, would you? Or would you? Not even. So no, how? Not, not even. Yeah, so perhaps you're being a little bit hard on yourself and, and making events that are happening, perceiving them as something you've done wrong. Whereas actually they, they could just be events that happen for whatever reason. I'm not trying to discredit anything that you're saying. I'm just wondering if that could be a habit that you're getting into. I think that's a habit that I am very much into because I'm a fixer or the person that didn't do enough. You know, I can't, I think that is the story that I've had. And I think you just made a really good point there because um, that didn't take long to get to make sense to me, I guess is what I want to say. So yeah. that's a really good point. I've just really found it helpful for myself in a similar situation where I've, um, you know, it, I always take myself out of it and go, well, if, if someone else was doing this, how would I perceive them? And quite often it's very different to how I perceive myself. And just to take a step back and go, well, how about I be a bit kinder to myself mm -hmm. um, as I would be to other people? Um, and I find sometimes that gets me through situations that make me a bit angry or a bit nervous or whatever. 
that's a really good point. And I, I really, I do appreciate that, Judy, truly, because I think that's a good tool that I could use just to kind of, to make it, um, I guess, to take out that, that, that piece of it's my fault or yeah. I didn't do enough, you know, um, to put it back into perspective, that's the word I'm trying to find, to, to put it into perspective because Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't ever, I would never think about it. Anybody else. No, I, when I think about that, I'm like, oh. I don't know so, why as humans we're so hard on ourselves, but true, we do, true. Tend, to, we do tend to be. True. So thanks. Truly, really. oh, that's okay. Oh, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the first thing that came to mind, and and it was one of the like I just found the, the whole the modules that I've just done, and and the habits of our brains and what our brains the power our mind has over our whole being is just amazing to the point where it can change your whole perception of life. Exactly. Yeah, mm. exactly. So thank you. No, you're welcome. <laughs> Anybody else want to ask uh, Cheryl a question to get a little clearer on what's going on underneath the surface in her mind, what she's thinking, what beliefs she might have that are contributing to how she feels? Pascal? Yeah, I was just thinking... Um, do you feel that you have fears about, about what you want for yourself and that perhaps that you're not worthy enough? Lots. <laughs> Lots. My whole life has just completely changed. You know, I didn't expect to be, and, and again, and I talked about this at <laughs> this point in my life, my age. Um, I didn't expect to be completely rewriting my life. Um, and I am, and I'm, I'm glad for it because I, I don't want the life that I have had. Um, it has not been, it's been good in parts and I've learned a lot. Don't get me wrong, but I just want a whole lot different now. And I want different people in my life that are going to be safe and nurturing and kind and, and things like that. And I'm, I'm tired of trying to you know, fix, again, fix everybody else or, um, you know, just tolerate bad behavior. So yeah, there's a lot of, there is a lot of fear and a lot of um, probably self-doubt, but I, I feel like, <clears throat> you know, even though everybody thinks that like I'm the strong one, you know, that's, that's why I think that I've kind of isolated myself in a way because um, I never used to cry. I never used to really show emotion, even though I'm an INFJ, which is, a pretty, um, you know, introverted thinking person. Um, I was always the one like, you know, let's work the issues. Let's get all this done. You know, let's not complain or be negative. Let's just work the issue and get through it. And that's what I've done. And I think that has not served me well because I've left lots of pieces of me behind that I never dealt with or have been missing. Um, and that, again, was really smart and pointed that out to me. She was really intuitive about that. So I have been practicing a lot of things that she, we and her and I did in our coaching session together um, over the past um, week or so. But um, yeah, fear is, fear is a crappy thing to be driving you, I think. I don't, I hate it. And um, well, I came back onto the meeting because I just shut it off because I was like so mad, <laughs> mad and upset and just feeling bad. But, you know, here I am and um, just going to work through it. I just decided to come back up and start the meeting over. So it's a win for this little incident this evening. Um, and I think, yeah, I think, I think going through this is really can, kind of messy at times. And, and I and I think it's going to give me a lot more compassion. Not that I don't have that already for people, but I think it's going to give me a lot more passion or passion, compassion, and not and less judgmental of when I'm working with others to meet them where they're at instead of where I expect them to be. Um, yeah. So in other words, you're saying to meet yourself where you're at instead of where you think you expect yourself to be. Yeah, that's a hard one, but it's true. 
Yeah. <laughs> I know, there's no other way around it. Yeah. So. Yeah, un unbeknownst to everybody else, I know your background. You've shared it with me. So for me, I'm hearing lots of other different things that you don't feel that you're significant as a person and that it's your responsibility to appease other people, which is not your responsibility. And that's because of the life experiences that you had when you were referring to being treated a particular way and putting up with bad behaviour. Yeah. So anybody who's in a situation where they're constantly being put down, where they're constantly walking on eggshells, when they're constantly hearing the same negative messages are going to lose pieces of themselves and change who they are in order to fit somebody else's agenda. Or, in your case, in order to survive. Yep. And that's a hell of a burden. Nat, go for it. <sighs> Take a deep breath. I. Sure, because I had an actually session with you and I know a little bit as well what is going on and what's been going on in your life. Can I ask you a question? What is your little you need right now? What is your little Cheryl need? Take a deep oh. breath. In. I think the biggest thing is, is that um, you know, we talked about this the other day, we talked about, I just felt really like left behind, you know, just left, abandoned basically. And I did this thing the other day and it was like, I went back in my mind and I went back and I picked up all the pieces of myself, you know, and, and, I'm, Jew and I'm Jewish and, and I had read something and I don't know now if I had told you this when we had, were talking um, about the little me, but there was something that I had read about, you know, how we're never just like the age that we're, we are, we're all we're a collective of all of our experiences and we're all of our ages and that sort of thing. And I'd always have said to myself that I feel like sometimes I'm just 10 um, because a lot of people always say, you know, oh, you look so much younger or you um, have such a more younger heart or whatnot. Um, but I, I never felt like I was... Um, like validated as being a grown woman and having boundaries and, and all those sorts of things. And so um, I've, I've gone back over, since now it really points that out to me, I've gone back kind of at, over the past week or so and I've kind of gone back in my mind and like picked myself up and like put the pieces like back in my heart, like my little me like back in me. Like I saw myself as like one of those like a cookie cutter, you know, like a gingerbread man, <laughs> and, you know, like the little gingerbread man could be like several different sizes, you know, um, so Cheryl, and so I take my little person and put him in and, you know. Yeah, thank you. So Cheryl, did you, did you, did you actually spend some time uh, with the little, you? well, when I call the little you, you know already what I'm calling yeah. about, right? <sighs> so if and again, if, if that is okay, I will ask this question again. If you really take a deep breath in and just really listen to the question, just think what really she, what you really need right now, what the little you need right now, what the answer would be, whatever is coming to your mind. And I know it could be a bit... It's not easy, and I do understand that. I feel you. But sometimes what you just shared with me before and what you're just sharing, yeah, to actually feel it. No, I... Well, I don't... <clears throat> yeah. I just, I feel like I need to be connected or grounded to something. I just feel like I am how, out How can here you do that? 
How can you do that? I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. So who, who can give you that answer? Me. Okay. You know, her. I guess just doing, you know, a lot of the internal work, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Just feel stuck. I feel stuck and yeah, at the mercy of other people that Okay, take a deep breath. I in. just absolutely do not want to be. I do not want anybody else making choices for me anymore. I'm sorry you're really feeling like that. I'm really sorry. And I do actually hear you. Yeah. Please. What I would do here and maybe because I really connect with you and I really, really do. I have really, please forgive me that you feel like that. It's, and please, like, if anyone can actually, if you feel that you want to say something, please do it well. It is actually, I can feel it. And I, I really, because the connection been going actually the last four days so strongly. And I, I really, right now is as well, right now here, right, one o'clock. And I know that I would love to, take this process a little bit, a little bit deeper. And I can really relate it with everything, what I was saying and jumping from the coaching, right? Is that okay if I just jump out, right? And just, is that okay if I just say something or really I feel because I, the reason why I'm saying that is because you ask me not, could you be direct? And actually, if you see something, could you just say it? So if that would be okay for you. Fine. So just a little, uh, maybe that just a little short story. I didn't actually share much from the beginning, what I do and why I'm here on this course and I'm not going to do it because it's not about me. It's about you right now. I hear everything, what you said it, and I really connect because I went through exactly, well, not exactly, but similar thing, the self-sabotage constantly. And what I find out on this journey being that only when I really truly could connect with myself, with my really truly in tune in. And I, well, for me, it was the breath and is the breathing what I'm doing because breath is life and it's creator of the source, whatever you want to call it. Then when I start looking after myself and spending time with me. So the question is now, how much time you are actually in in that moment now instead of being maybe with the past or even the future how much you are looking after yourself and i'm not even saying come back and look up start looking after your little you because maybe it's too hard and it's okay and it's really like what i hear this what jody that was a great point thank you so much for sharing that is that sometimes we do actually right take a lot of responsibility on our shoulders and you are doing so lot and you're beautiful. You know, it's really like, it's so nice to connect with you and everything would you, you just inspiration for, for me, definitely. <laughs> and I believe for all, everyone in that group. I've been spending a lot of time in the past mm. and a lot of time looking at my future because I'm really scared of it. Mm. I'm scared of it yet I mean I know I can do it if I could just I just feel like I'm like I could just pull myself together and if I could just stop maybe it is self-sabotage if I could just stop doing that and believe and I'm really trying hard to do that um sometimes I don't believe something but I just press on through it like I'm pretending like I believe it you know like what do you what do you say like um you pretend it until it <laughs> until you believe it yourself or something there's some kind of saying but it it's it is true I and I have been spending a lot of time in the past because I've just been trying to like process it and understand it and maybe I just need to let it go and learn the things I can learn from it and just be like that is not part of my story anymore I mean within context um how do you let it go you just yeah you've been saying about this so what do you need to do before you answer, 
try to connect with yourself really because you know you know everything you know the take a deep breath in whatever is working right now for you and what do you need to do to actually let it go and i know it's not maybe easy right now i need to let go of the story that i had been told and told myself of as i grew up you know getting married having children being married living happily ever after keep a clean house and make dinner <laughs> it's like turning everybody's stomachs at this point and everything will be fine mm -hmm. and that is not my story anymore and it's not the story that I want for myself anymore um I'm just like I you know I'm trying to rewrite this whole new story and but the girl that sometimes I can't tell you if I like chocolate or vanilla better you know so if I can ask you a question think about that it's only one cure one cure which well i know it's maybe i'm not sure if that that will be the right question however think about this is the one cure for for everything what that would be one cure for everything yeah yeah for you so so, so just to just maybe to a little bit help you here because i know it wasn't a clear question like okay you have imagine you do have a teacher i don't know of fear or you have a teacher of love so you have a fear and love what would you choose love okay so now how do you feel if you say love are you feel how is that feeling how is that working for you like that or a little bit like that good no, good peaceful <laughs> great you can breathe so now the question is so what could you do now right to coming back to the let it go and what, what, do you think that you maybe need to make some decision in life take the responsibility which which is not really easy right it's like well scary a little bit fluffy but do you think that <sighs> i need to trust myself is what i need to do mm -hmm. smart i need to trust myself and i need to trust myself and live my life i mean that's what i need to do it's just, I need to, and I mean that with all good things in living your life. Like you have, you know, the inner peace and the, the knowledge and you trust yourself to come up, you know, the answers to come up as they need to. And I think that's it. I think that goes back to like where it is. It's like trusting myself. Just like Jody had said about, um, the uh, kind of the perspective, the stories that you tell yourself or the, um, the way you frame it. And I, and I don't know that, I guess I trusted myself enough to frame my story like, well, I'm sure this happens with other parents. You know, I've been parenting for a long time and that's why I think I'm like, sometimes I'm like, I can't, why do I not, why do I always resort back to these old stories or these old framework? But I think it's habit, a lot of it, um, you know, Happy feels scary sometimes. How about that? Happy seems very scary do, to me. Do you think, yeah, do you think that like being happy, that's they're not scary for others? Or do I you think know. that, do you think, so what, being happy as well, maybe? Or? So what does really happy mean to you? Could you describe that maybe? Like, how does that feel? How does that feel? How is that? Um, that's an easy one. Happy to me feels very secure. Like I'm, I'm secure. Like I, mm -hmm. I don't have anybody taking something away from me. I don't have somebody threatening me. Um, I can do what I want. So what this I want. Really identifying a need here, isn't it, Cheryl? The need that you have now at this point in your life is to trust yourself to feel safe and secure which is going to help you feel happy which is ultimately what you'd like to feel so really it's about how can you fulfill that need 
And I'd really like to give the others a chance at questioning at this point as well. Hmm. Diane? And you said that um, happy feels scary for you. So when was a time that you were really happy but maybe something happened that it became scary? It wasn't a happy time, it was a scary time. And is that maybe why you're putting a block on, your, on you being happy? Because you did mention happy feels scary. So why would happy feel scary? It's because she's afraid um, of. Yeah. <laughs> what are you afraid of? Yeah. Um, why are you afraid of being happy? Because it might not last, Cheryl? Yeah, that's it. I was just trying to figure out what, I'm like, I was trying to get the words there. Yeah, because it, it won't last. Or, yeah. And that there we come back to that belief from earlier, what I want is not available to me. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be happy, but and that you, is life is and that you deserve that happiness. You deserve what you give to everybody else. Mm. You know, and and it is a big job. It's a big job being on your own with kids, and but you deserve as much happiness as you're trying to make your kids a settled house and and everything. You deserve that too, and it can last. Very good point. Yeah, because um, if you can believe that you deserve that happiness and when you can be happy um, and believe in that happiness, then your kids can believe in that happiness because it will come from you from a pure heart. Whereas, you know, sometimes we run around trying to fix all these things um, but it's got to come from our pure heart. That's pretty simple stuff, but really complex. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's hard to, to actually articulate, to put some words to it, because it's kind of been an enigma for me. Hmm. Hmm. Because we can make ourselves so tired and exhausted from trying to make everybody happy. Yeah, very true. And then we're so exhausted that there's no time left for us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes if the kids want to argue with each other or not want to have their shower, just let it go and walk away and they don't have a shower tonight. <laughs> <laughs> if it's going to make me upset, fighting with them about having a shower, you know. Someone said to me once, but did you die? No, I didn't die. They just didn't have a shower. And I was okay. It's a really good point. So, yeah, it's finding how can, yeah, how, I just found it really, um, I felt for you when you said happy felt scary because Vicky knows, um, yeah, how, that, how I felt about that myself and going back to, and that saying you're a little person, and finding that, that time when happy felt scary for that little person and when happy didn't last, that going back to that first time when that may have, that you can remember that may, that may have happened and, then, and giving that little person a big hug and really telling, and telling them Big person, now telling little person, it's okay. I love you and you can be happy. You don't have to do this anymore. 
Do you think you could do that? Yeah. Can you think of a time that you can go back to the little person when she felt happy was scary? Yeah. Definitely. Sometimes that might be when you are quite little and then sometimes when the deviation from that belief that I deserve to be happy shifts in your 20s or your late teens or even your 30s, sometimes that's the time you need to go back to when it changed. So it's just the younger version of you. It could be the little person, could be the inner child, or it could be a younger version of you as an adult, but still a younger version of you. And your subconscious will know. When you sit there and you think about that and you think, when did it change? When did happiness become something I felt afraid of? Mm -hmm. If you just stay with it and allow your mind to take you back to when did that change? When did I start thinking differently about that? What was it? What was the environment around me that affected me internally that I changed my internal environment from that belief to that one? And that's the time you go back to. And you reframe the story. You change the story. Well, back then, you didn't know what was ahead of you. You did the best you could. You were younger. You were trusting. You believed what people told you. And now you're older, you're wiser, you're stronger, you're more resilient for having lived through those experiences. You've got so much more to bring to the table that you back then just didn't know, didn't have, didn't possess, hadn't yet learned. And this is how you can sometimes fill the gap so that you can connect back with yourself, become whole again, and then move forward together. Thank you. That makes so much sense to me. It really does. That makes very much sense. Doable. And necessary yeah and with a lot of self love okay with it. and compassion i'm sorry i didn't hear what you said with, with a lot of self-love and compassion yep much thank made. you did anybody else want to say anything to cheryl i think we might wind it up shortly you're welcome to to stay back with anybody if you want to, or to continue the conversation next session with Nat, or even schedule something with me and we'll have a chat. Um, but did anybody else want to say anything to Cheryl just before? <coughs> yeah, sure. Um, Pascal or Elisa, whichever one of you want to go first. I'll pick Pascal. <laughs> you first, then Elisa. Um, okay, I just. Did you mention earlier something like about when you're feeling a certain way, you shouldn't, I shouldn't feel that way? Did you say that? Well, like I, think I, probably, I think I probably did. <laughs> okay. Um, I was just wondering if you could perhaps allow yourself to feel a certain emotion and just write it out and just be, uh, if you could be loving towards yourself whilst you're doing that, um, encourage yourself that you're safe and it's okay to go through that. Uh, for instance, like, and I'm feeling it right now, like I'm nervous speaking right now. My heart's going really fast and I can start hearing my voice. But um, to remember to give yourself some love whilst you're going through that and you'll be okay. That's what I was going to say. Thank you, Beth. You're welcome. Okay, Elisa. Hi, sorry. Um, can you hear me there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, just just uh, uh, a little thought that uh, I connect. I really connected with you, and that when you well, when you mentioned earlier uh, something about well, everybody thinks that I'm the strong one because I never cry because so it's like that's maybe what you have a label that you have like really present for you so 
if you are the strong one, you have to be always there for for everybody because you are the strong one. And I really connect with that. Uh, I really connect with you about that. Because I'm the oldest in my family. Anyways, like it's like like Nat says, it's about you. Uh, but I totally understand what it, it feels like. Oh, I'm the stronger one. I am there all the time. So maybe just let the label go. Maybe it would be like a little homework that you can do, like work every day. Then like, it's okay if I'm not the strongest this time. It's okay. And uh, there might be a little sense of guilt when you are not the, the one there for everybody, like feeling guilty or at least that happened to me more than once, like feeling guilty for being happy while instead of I could be spending this time making happy someone someone else happy instead of me. And then, and then you just switch. Instead of me making yourself happy, you just decide to do something else because you feel some sort of guilt. But maybe it's a little homework to, to, to be like, okay, it's okay. Don't I don't have to be... A, a guilty to feel guilty for being happy um, I have the right to be happy too maybe it's a good point yeah the g word guilt <laughs> you know I think there's yeah a lot of guilt so thanks for saying that and understanding because yeah I, I don't know that I I, I want to be strong and I know I am strong but not to the point of where I've hardened myself up so much that I can't really even feel anything anymore. I like where you go numb for myself. Feel everybody for everything else, but for myself, feeling numb. But yeah, I'm not into that now. <laughs> no. Okay. So, what what sort of takeaways, Cheryl, have you have you got from this last forty five minutes or so? that you're going to work on, that you are now more conscious of incorporating, being aware of, bringing into, letting go of over the next week or so. So that way everybody here can then check in on you if they want to, you can send your private message or an email or post into the group. Cheryl, how are you doing? What is it that, <laughs> what is it that you've taken away from today that you would like to, to work on over the next week to assist with how you've been feeling? to take ownership of your own life now? Well, the first thought that comes into my mind when you ask me that is the word grateful because it's nice to have friends. <laughs> and it's nice to have people that you know are authentic and supportive and that sort of thing and can understand. So thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, and... Working on being very conscious of if I'm if I'm working off of if I'm hearing fear or if I'm hearing love. I that was a good contrasting um, image for me. Um, is this fear speaking to me or is this love speaking to me? And I think that I can use that, especially when. Um, I'm feeling really judgmental about myself because I'm feeling guilty <laughs> over not doing whatever it is I'm supposed to be doing or feeling guilty because I haven't checked in on somebody or I haven't, um, that I'm putting myself first. I think that's the biggest thing that I, I am putting myself first, um, and, and again, not, not feeling guilty about that. Um, and also looking at, um, I think this goes hand in hand, being, feeling worthy, feeling worthy and deserving. Um, I mean, I'm here and I'm breathing, so I am worthy. I am deserving of the best life that I want to, you know, create for myself. I say that with a context, obviously. But, um, and, and I think another thing I'm going to do is I, I'm going to, I used to do this all the time, but I'm going to make a vision board 
and I'm just going to put, I'm going to really do a lot of thinking and visualizing maybe what I want my life to look like in maybe three months or six months from now, like, you know, just those, those small um, steps that, you know, are acquirable. I guess I can, I can do those things. It's not so far out there. Um, and, and, and being consistent and um, dedicated to working on my, my models. Not that I haven't been, but really putting that, that's something that's very practical to me and very like hands-on that I can put like right in front of me and say, okay, like this amount of time today I'm blocking out for me. And <laughs> like Diane said, okay, guys, if you're not going to take a shower, you know, you're not going to, you know, just the practical, practical things of life. Then I, I made a decision to, to let those judgmental or guilt feelings go and the angry feelings go and just be like, okay, <laughs> please smell. Okay. <laughs> that's on you. So, um, those are the things that I'm going to do. Okay, great. So a couple of things there that might be helpful for action steps very early on, you said you journal a lot. Yep. So what you could do when it comes to choosing love or fear is you could write down a list of all the ways and all the times that you catch yourself choosing fear so that as you catch them, you write them down, you see them, they're visual. You're much more aware of when you are saying things to yourself, believing things, choosing things that are based on fear. And then you can write yourself a nice little list of what you could do instead to choose love. So when you catch yourself berating yourself, feeling guilty, beating yourself up for not to have done it, not doing this, not doing that, that's obviously out of fear. So write that down on your list. And then on the other side, on your love list, what could you switch that to when you catch yourself berating yourself? Could you switch that to this is when I most need to practice self-compassion, when I most need to be patient and kind to myself. So I choose love. I choose to be compassionate and kind to myself and not expect myself to do everything for everybody else all the time. How do, what do you think of doing that, creating a, a fear and a love list? And, and it's very personalized okay. to you. No, I, I like it, and I'm, I'm going to do that. As soon as I get up here, I'm going to take your words and <laughs> write my directions out on there. So I have it, and I don't lose that thought and yeah. make it a practice. Yeah, and you'll be able to watch this back as well to take all of the wisdom that you've gleaned from today from other people's questions as well. Good point. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to say anything in closing before we wind up? Diane? And um, maybe in those times when you write in your journal too, um, any times that maybe you did slip up and, you know, didn't do the things you were meant to do or had hoped to do and just um, tell yourself that it was okay. I didn't do that, but I'm not going to feel guilty or put myself down for not getting it done. So yeah, something like that, Vicky. Like um yeah, just a, a reminder to yourself that <laughs> you know, instead of going, you know, beating yourself up, I didn't get that done or I didn't do that. Um, maybe in your journal just say, oh, you know, okay, today I had hoped that I'd done would do that, but I didn't, but it's okay. I'm not, you know. I'm not going to feel guilty about that or put myself down. I didn't do it today. Tomorrow I'll, I, I can try again. Hmm. That's a good point too. Thank you. You can just go on the, on the to-do list. Pick top three priorities for today. Everything else can wait. It's not like your to-do list is never going to, you know, not have anything on it, is there? So exactly, yeah. One, one main list and you just keep adding things to it. Just pick three and then put that on a brand new list. Each day I'm only going to focus on these three things. Everything else can just stay on that list and I'll get to them eventually. Depends on how important they are, on how much of a priority they are. But that list isn't going to go anywhere. It'll just keep changing according to the day of the week and the month of the year, etc. But if you just choose the three top priorities for that day, you've only got a little tiny list over here with three things on it. Much easier, much more doable. Priorities, everything else can wait. 
this is important, that's not important. There's a quote sometimes I post on my Facebook page where it says, sometimes the world will, you know, stick up your, will make you stick up your hand and say, this is important and this is important and this is important. But you need to take your hand, put it on your heart and say, no, this is important. I will remember that and I will actually do that. <laughs> this is important. Yeah. In other words, you are important. Exactly. You are significant. What you need, what you want is top of your priority list. Yeah. Isn't it funny how like a lot of the time we think we need permission for that? Mm. yeah whose permission do you need if you need permission whose permission do you need in the past my own somebody else <laughs> yeah mm. but now it's yours right yeah. so this is actually quite a new and wonderful exciting world opening up ahead of you because now you're the one who's going to make all the decisions for you mm -hmm. You're the one who gets to create the life that you will have from this point on. With all of the experience that you've had leading you to this point, absolutely reminding you what you no longer will tolerate, what you no longer will accept, what you no longer want to allow in your life. Now that you know that, even through hard won experience, the message is clear. That's in the past. I no longer draw that to me. I no longer want that. And I now know who and what I will not tolerate in my life. Now you get to focus forward on what you do want, on who you do want to share your time with, on how you will treat yourself, on the boundaries that you will set. And if anybody crosses them, they don't get to be a part of your life. You get to decide whatever those things are. I'm just giving you some examples but you get to become the conscious creator from this point on for your life. And that's pretty exciting. It is. It makes me feel actually like an adult when you said that. <laughs> so. Yeah, and it's scary being an adult because it means you've got to be responsible. I know. <laughs> but you know, and I have been. <laughs> yeah. you know, when you take ownership of your life, when you become responsible for what you think, say, and do, mm -hmm. That's exciting because even though it's scary because you can't blame anybody else for how you feel then, it means that you get to choose. And even if you make a choice that doesn't quite work out or make you feel the way that you thought it would, you get to make another choice. You're constantly getting to choose every day, mindfully, consciously, how you will spend that day and who you will spend it with and how you will feel in that day. Mm -hmm. And that, that trumps the fear because that's, that's made out of love. Yep. I, that resonates pretty big with me. So, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all coaches for contributing today. Yeah. Thank you all. So let's just take one collective big deep breath in through the nose, <laughs> right down into the heart space, into the lower lungs. Relax the neck and shoulders. And let's exhale, let all the stuff from this session go. And we're going to breathe in all the wonderful wisdom. And we're going to let go of all the old stress and worry. And we're going to inhale all these wonderful new connections with each other that we've made. And as we exhale, knowing that you can reach out to anybody else in this group now because you know that you'll be safe having a conversation with them. Okay, wonderful. Thanks for toughing it out, Nat, and for Elisa. It's, geez, nearly two o'clock, my gosh. In the morning, oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pascal, for joining your first session as well. Thanks, Diane, always good to see you. Take care, everybody.